to be worried about what folk feel about me here. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing I want to get straight now. Yeah. I don't worry about who don't like me, it's fine. Yeah. I don't worry about who don't speak to me, it's fine. Yeah. All I'm here for is to serve the Lord. What's up everybody? Hope all is well with you. Listen, I had to put on my clergy today because today is official day. And so I just want to just give a quick recap of everything that has happened this week. And start off by hitting that subscribe button. When you do, tap the little bell icon next to it. That way you won't miss anything. And speaking of subscribing. This has been a very interesting year. I think the lineup was, it was, it was what it was. I'll say that. I think the lineup was what it was and it, it, it's just going to be that we didn't have the headliners, but that's okay. We use in-house people and I think that is an awesome thing, okay? I think that is a very awesome thing to use in-house people, give the in-house, give uh, our Kojic brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers a chance to minister on such a platform like this. It is an awesome thing because our ultimate goal is not to please people but it is to please God, okay? The preachers, they were given an opportunity to minister the gospel, and to be honest with you, I think that they did their best. Let me just say that, I think the preachers did their best. There were a few preachers that stuck out. Uh, the seating has been very low. I mean, they have reconstructed the, the dome, and it has been smaller than it ever has been before. Um, that's not anything that is fictitious, that's facts, okay? I mean, but you all came out in record numbers on today. You all started flying in on Friday and Saturday and showed up for official day. And like always, it looks good for the camera. And I'm, I'm just happy that the saints of God came out and we supported our great, wonderful church. A lot of folks are complaining saying, it's always low in the beginning of the week. Well, let, let's say this, let's say this. Yes, it's always low at the beginning of the week, but let's let's try to understand why. Um, these hotel prices are absolutely, astronomically high. You know why they're high? When we first went to St. Louis, and I know prices go up and infl inflation of prices and things of that nature, but it's really expensive for the Saints to come. And they have to take off work and not, all, not only that, but we have to understand that with the price of hotels, like two, $300 a night, people can't afford that. A lot of people can't afford that. I mean, the bishops probably can because, you know, the church is supporting them. Um, but when we first started out in St. Louis, it was very convenient because, you know, $89 a night, $90 a night, $100, $150, $189. Night. That was a little bit more reasonable. But you have to understand, and let's be real, church. A lot of these bishops are getting kickbacks, right? Right. I, I, I shouldn't go into more detail, but they're getting kickbacks. And 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 with those kickbacks, you know, it's it's okay because they're taken care of and the people are left to fend for themselves while we're coming to worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. Oh yeah, let me not forget. Y'all, baby, they didn't set up here and had to carry the happy preacher out to church. Honey, this man is up there sitting in the platinum section, which I was a little confused because I was like, don't the happy preacher always sit in the platinum section? Ain't don't he always sit there? Uh, and I know he probably got the money, but this man is set up here and they told him to move and he didn't want to move. They call security and this man passes all the way out. I said, you know what? I said, now this right here is that mess right here. So I'm gonna need you to get up off that floor. Get up, get up off that floor. Cause if they told you to move, you, you gonna get moved, okay? You, you gonna get moved, you, you gonna get moved, all right? Baby, they carried this man on all fours. I mean, baby, they had 
one two legs, one two arms, and just snatched him up off that ground and took him on up out the sanctuary. Honey, I'm so I just was looking. I said, now you know what? This that stuff right there. This that stuff right there. You know there were some good fashions. There were some good fashions. Um, we don't come to church for this, but you know sometimes we do come to church for this. Anyways, there were some good fashions this week, and you guys did a great job. Just hope you can go home to some own lights, okay? Anyways, I know a lot of y'all was upset really about um, Sheila Vickers, but y'all y'all have to listen to the whole message, okay? Listen to the whole message. And I know a lot of us, because I know I got a little nervous too. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Somebody got, whoa, what? Somebody been robbed? Yeah, I mean, it was taken in the wrong way, but the message was still good. So, you know, okay. Superintendent Carl Pierce preached. He preached under the anointing of, uh, of God. And he preached his best in the capacity of where he was, okay? And I feel as though when he started preaching about the salt of the earth, everybody else fell suit. They started talking about the salt. One, I, the, 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 the topic of the convocation was seasoned, seasoning. We are the salt of the earth, okay? If we are not salted, we are therefore to be trotted under the foot of men. Now, let me, let me say this. He preached the best he could in the capacity of where he was. Bishop Don Shelby, I think what has happened with Bishop Shelby is he had to challenge everybody in the house. I think that's what happened. Bishop Shelby had to challenge everybody in the house and just let them know, listen, while we are attacking everybody. Bishop Don Shelby preached an awesome message and kudos to him for at least hearing and, and seeing this stuff and just petitioning and challenging his fellow brothers and the congregants. Because again, if we do not challenge the people to do something different, we are going to lose not only a generation, but we're going to lose a church. Someone told me, said they said, if the church does not change, there will be a split. I am on the border, I'm on the edge with that because I really don't want to see a split come in the house. But if the church does not change, there will be a split, you know, and that's just honest, that's just, just the truth. Um, you all can see even with the pictures that we have downsized tremendously. Uh, seriously, we have downsized tremendously from last year alone because just two years ago, well, like I said, we had three sections in the middle, silver, gold, and platinum. And now we're just down to platinum, which is half of the middle section, and we're almost to the balcony. If you guys can't see that, I don't know what. When I got a chance to listen to uh, uh, Superintendent Lawrence Blake, you know, this is the opportunity for you to come with it. Come with it, you know what I'm saying? Come with it. Now, well, this, ain't, this ain't about all that, no. Honestly, I mean, whether you want to believe it or not, this is a performance. Y'all, that, that's true. This is a performance, and this is your opportunity to step forward and show the people that you know what you're doing and you know what you're talking about. All right. Bishop Patrick Wooten talked about cleaning the house, and that was a great message. Awesome message. That was an awesome message. He talked about cleaning the house. But then he, he got onto the topic of just like Earl Carter, you know, you want to get on the topic of where everybody's going to just get crazy and you want to start talking about the gays. And then we just go too far and we go in deep. And, and my response was, well, if we're going to talk about that, let's talk about everything. I, I, and I'm, I'm not I'm not here trying to uplift anything or justify anything let me say that there is no justification here because right is right and wrong is wrong there's no justification here but what i am saying is this if we're going to do that let's call out everything because it's only right it's only right if we're going to preach about sin there is a list of it and we need to preach all of that and see then with that with bishop patrick wooten then if we're going to have enough balls to come out and to call people out, may not call them by name, but we know who you're talking about. Then with that being the case, then have enough balls to turn around to your, feather, to your fellow brothers and sisters 
and call them out and challenge them too. Challenge them because again, when you are a pastor, when you are a pastor, a leader, somebody shepherd overseeing the flock, it is your job to lead by example. And we've already covered, we've already covered that and everything. It's your job to lead by example and to have integrity. Because again, if you are someone's bishop, you are to rule your house well. And your household should be that beacon of light that shines to the flock and to the people to let them know that you are exemplifying the life of Christ and the life that God commanded us to live. All right, um, uh, Bishop, uh, not Bishop, Lord, can't call her Bishop, that would be wrong in this church. Um, Supervisor Barbara Bryant preached an awesome service and ministered the unadulterated word of God and ushered the flow of God in that place. And I'm telling you, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I don't know about you, but I know I did. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Mother Kelly's message, she did a good job. She told her testimony and she was talking about how we are to exemplify what we preach, exemplify what we preach. She did an awesome job. Um, and then Supervisor Bryant, Barbara Bryant, she did an awesome job preaching too in the Women's Day service. And she also allowed the Lord to come in in such a worship experience. It was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And that tends to usually happen. That tends to usually happen in the women's service. Now in the men's service with Superintendent uh, Michael Golden. Um, Michael Golden did a good job. Michael Golden did a good job. And I, I really do appreciate a lot of the men that are stepping out of the norm. And when we preach, or I should say when he preached, just the challenge that came forth of we need to live by the book. We need to live by the book. Uh, Bishop Patrick Wooten, again, I'm just preaching things that stood out. Uh, because of Bishop Patrick Wooten, his message did stand out and it was a good challenging message. It was a good challenging message because we do need to clean house, okay? We do need to clean house. And in challenging everybody to uh, live by the Bible and cleaning house, it first starts with the head. Because when you get in the shower, the water starts in the head and it flows down. So the head needs to get clean. The leaders need to get clean, okay? The leaders need to get clean. And all of our flaws and everything, we need to make these things right. We need to make them right because we need to exemplify what we are preaching. We already know how Bishop Blake's message went, you know, it is what it is. Praise God for you, Bishop. You know, it is what it is. Because I got to go on to the Linwood Dillard. I looked at the eight bishops that were consecrated to be bishops. And... There was a huge celebratory time for one that was not there. He was given the okay. There was big announcements made on Facebook, YouTube, social media at large. And then all of a sudden, Saints, all of a sudden, yeah. to my sibling, my sister, my family, to my citadel family. Holy family and friends and civic and religious leaders. The overwhelming congratulatory expressions of support and encouragement upon the announcement uh, that, that we are becoming bishops designated in the Church of God in Christ. Yeah. Yes. The two rumors to count have been amazing. Yes. What's from the heart reaches the heart, and my heart is flooded with great humility and love and honor. And I'm most humbled and honored by our illustrious presiding bishop, Charles Blake, and the general board for their own company and bring such an opportunity to serve at a greater level. A couple of months ago, upon the recommendation of the General Assembly Commission on Standards and Extension, the presiding bishop and general board approved the creation of a new jurisdiction in the state of Tennessee with yours truly. Yeah. 
attending the final approval of the General Assembly. Yeah. The presiding bishop and general board also determined to provisionally appoint and consecrate us as an auxiliary bishop initially on the Sunday night during the 111th Holy Convocation and were prepared to consequently, if the General Assembly had approved, us as the jurisdictional bishop of the new jurisdiction. Of course, this had been practiced for years and proved to be that advantageous. And consequently, I attended the Episcopal Academy a couple of months ago, paid all the required fees and met all the requirements. And also, I was honored by other fellow bishop designates and brethren to be elected to be the president of the Episcopal class of 2018. <laughs> However, the Judiciary Board issued an injunction in 2017 to enjoin the presiding bishop and general board from conducting the consecrations of bishops due to a constitutional question. And this matter yet remains unresolved and consequently the spirit of that injunction obviously prevails today. And unfortunately, that uh, unresolved matter has impacted me and two other bishops designated, bishop designates similarly uh, situated. And so, responsibly, I must announce that the public consecration will not take place during the convocation. But without question, I am sympathetic and quite sensitive to acknowledge that this may be disappointing to some of you as there was great anticipation and excitement and many of you had taken off your jobs, made hotel reservations, buses had been chartered, airline tickets were purchased, venues were contracted. But please know that I did seek relief and a provisional opportunity I spoke with the Chairman of the General Assembly and the Chief Justice to lobby for relief and consideration of any flexibility to allow the consecration to take place during the convocation to avoid irreparable harm as was done last year. However, neither of them saw any opportunity for relief at this time due to an agreement. So I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience and loss that some of you may have experienced, but we will refund all the money for those that were given for the chartered bus trip. After service at the foyer, you can get to pick up your uh, reimbursement, uh, or if you want to call the office at 901 754 4164. But I am in a state, uh, state of wow at your outpour of love, support, and willingness to travel to St. Louis. It's such an occasion. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. But amid all of this, all things really do work together for the good. Of course, we're still bishop president, and we believe that the General Assembly will approve the creation of a new jurisdiction during the convocation, and consequently, the great advantage is now that after the General Assembly, the public consecration may not be in St. Louis, but now it can take place anytime immediately afterwards, and so we're deciding that we're going to have our consecration in the city of my birth. The city where we were raised, the city the community where we served, the city and region where we passed the city that will serve as the headquarters of the new prospective jurisdiction, the city that is considered to be the Pentecost of Mecca and Jerusalem, the city where God birthed the Church of God in Christ as a Pentecost denomination through Bishop C. H. Mason, Memphis, Tennessee. This will be opportunity for our families, our friends, our church family, connected pastors and congregations, the ecumenical community, government officials, and the city at large to participate and witness that historic moment. We are in communication with our presiding bishop and after convocation, we will let you know of that date that we will have that public consecration right here of yours truly. Listen, I'm excited about our future together as we build and expand the kingdom of God and impact our communities. For Jesus Christ, I want to thank you for your support and commitment. I'm blessed to have you on this journey with me. And again, I apologize for your inconvenience, but all things work together for the good of the good of the Lord. And let the church say amen. I said, let the church say amen. And so right after service, you'll be able to go and you'll be able to pick up your reimbursement. And uh, there will be glory yeah. after this. Somebody clap your hands and praise God. But you know, saints, let's, let's, let's look at this thing. If you give someone the okay 
and that this is what's going to happen for them and they're in the process of taking classes and all this other stuff to become what they're celebrating and things of that nature why do you take it back you should have said a lot of these things in the beginning anyways we still thank God for Superintendent Linwood Dillard Bishop designee uh, Linwood Dillard I mean he was given the title I mean I don't know how we take it back but he was given it and 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 do we call him superintendent or do we call him bishop designee which one is it going to be i'm just saying praise the lord everybody this has been <laughs> this has been your 2018 recap for the week hope you guys have enjoyed it and i look forward to seeing you at the 2019 aim convention that will be in tampa florida all right talk to you soon let's not forget about any other updates also, you can check on Kojic.org for any other updates and anything like that. But make sure you come back here for any more news about the church or whatever the case may be. Talk to you soon. Have a good day.